Okay, as promised, uh, we're going to get into the hardware portion of how I set up this uh, production studio. Uh, you'll have to excuse the shakiness because I'm just using the webcam, I'm hand-holding it, so that I can kind of move around the facility and you can see everything that I've got here. Uh, we'll start with the computer itself. As you can see, it's nothing hugely spectacular. It's a gateway, um, I believe it's 830GM. Uh, it's dual core with about 2 gig of memory. Um, it's sufficient for my needs. A lot of people, you know, kind of overpower these things. But uh, to date, I really haven't felt too pressed. As I've gotten more into video, uh, I may have to upgrade it and get something a little bit uh, beefier. But generally speaking, it's uh, it served me well in, in all of my purposes. Uh, of course, I use an external uh, hard drive, rather large one. Um, because that's obviously we're going to be dealing a lot with some very very large files so um, I keep those there and I'll probably end up getting yet another one as well this is my Primera Bravo SE <coughs> this is called <coughs> sorry this is referred to as a disk publishing system let me open it up here for you for a moment so you can kind of see what it looks like inside you'll notice that uh, you have a couple of trays in here. Now, this is the tray that you load up with uh, either your DVDs or your CDs. It'll take 20 at a time. And over here is the robotic arm uh, and the print head. So what happens is when you load this thing up, uh, this robotic arm comes over, picks these things up one at a time, drops them into a lower tray over here, and that has a CD slash DVD burner. Um, it'll burn the CD or DVD and then once that's completed that'll come out the robotic arm will move over pick it up that'll go back in and it'll open up a another tray that's up here which is uh, what it uses to print so it'll drop that uh, DVD or the CD into that tray and then of course the print head comes over and goes back and forth and prints the uh, the label on it uh, very great a very good uh, unit uh, and of course, once that's done, then it drops it into this bottom tray here, which is a pullout tray. Um, like I say, you can do 20, up to 20 at a time. And if, if you need to do more than that, then you just do it as uh, more than one job. You just reload the trays and, uh, and you go. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, you, they've, the prices on these have come down to the point where it's doable in, in a house. It, it used to be that, uh, uh, you pretty much have to send this kind of stuff out to get duplicated, but uh, uh, the the units are now at a point where, and plus if you take on additional jobs of duplicating for people, um, you can pretty much uh, get it to pay for itself. Um, you see a shot here of my Yamaha monitor. I have a uh, Yamaha near field monitors. Um, by and large, uh, I really don't use headsets all that much except for when I'm specifically recording. Most of my mixing and mastering is done using these monitors uh, for several reasons because I think I get a much truer sound than I do out of headsets and you can overcompensate. I've found that, you, that headsets can cause you to overcompensate for certain things because uh, they tend to be very bassy. These are very, very flat and uh, I can tend to get a much better mixing and mastering job done. Uh, this is the microphone that I use. I have to back away from it a bit. It's an AKG microphone. Um, uh, it's a condenser mic. Um, it served me very, very well. I think it has a very nice, crisp sound to it. And we'll move over here to the actual music equipment. Uh, this is an older keyboard. I've had this keyboard around for probably 10 years. But, you know, it does, it serves my purpose um, for when I need to, you know, add in uh, MIDI, particularly. I'd, I do everything MIDI out of this, and for that reason, you'll see up here I've got this uh, JV1010 Roland synth um, that I use for uh, capturing the MIDI. Now next to that, uh, over here, uh, I have the M-Audio uh, unit, Fast Track Pro, which is where I plug in the, the microphones. And then over here on the end, you'll see that's an Alesis uh, um, mixing board which I use for mixing in guitar together with uh, with microphone and so on and so forth. Uh, there at the end, that's an old CD recorder. I've had it around for a long time. Um, it's kind of my fallback if I need to, but mostly it's just keeping that, uh, that shelf balanced. 
So that's about the the whole thing. Of course, uh, monitors, you've got to have a good size monitor uh, because you're dealing, particularly with videos, you're dealing with a lot of your screen being taken up. And as you see the software, you're going to see that uh, they tend to have an awful lot of complexity to them. So you want to see as much as you can. So I think a, a large monitor is, is very much worthwhile. So anyhow, that's about the, the, the whole thing as far as uh, the hardware. Next, we'll move into dealing with the software components one by one.